Welcome to the Dog Training Audio Experience Podcast. This is the podcast where you are going to get a lot of value when it comes to learning more about dog training, dog behavior, and beyond. I'm your host, Erica Gonzalez. I'm a certified dog trainer and behavior consultant and the founder of From Dusk Till Dog. Real quick before we jump into the podcast, today's episode is brought to you by Pupford. As a dog trainer, I use and recommend using training treats to reward your dog quite frequently. And some of our favorites are the freeze-dried training treats from Pupford. They're not only high value, but they're low calorie and limited ingredient. And if you put them on auto ship, you'll actually get 15% off. And with that, let's jump in to today's episode. Welcome. Today's topic is all about what to look for when hiring a dog walker. So if you're looking to hire a dog walker at some point in your dog's life, then this episode is for you. Here to chat all about this with me is Mandy Bautel. She is the founder of the apparel brand Woof Culture and the founder and certified dog trainer of Pacific North Woof located in Oregon. I also want to note that Mandy has a lot of experience as a professional dog walker and pet sitter over the years and has previously ran a successful dog walking business in California as well. So welcome, Mandy. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I'm super excited to talk and nerd out about dog walking. You know, I was really glad that we taught we could touch on this because I know I've needed to hire dog walkers. A lot of my clients over the years have needed to hire dog walkers. I've been asked about referrals for dog walkers. And I think this episode will help us just collect all the important information someone should look for and, you know, how to vet people to find the right match for them. Because I consider this very important as my list is a very long laundry list. Right. I'm going to leave my dog <laughs> with somebody, right? <laughs> so I feel like um, this will be really good for those listening. So thank you so much for coming on. You have so much experience. I'm excited to hear what you have to say here. So Jumping right in, I know with everything going on right now, especially that, you know, our dogs have been home with us a lot. And I know some people are heading back to work or doing some type of out of the house stuff. So as people are returning to somewhat of a new normal, either now or in the near future, we'll be leaving our dogs behind. So what, in your professional opinion, should someone generally look for or consider when they're looking for a dog walker? Um, Definitely. I would ask for like where they go, see what parks they go to. If it's a park that your dog knows they're comfortable with, Mm -hmm. or maybe it's going to be a new area. So maybe thinking, okay, how am I going to set my dog up to go to this new area? Um, If they are licensed and insured or bonded, because that is huge. You don't know when an emergency is going to happen. You Mm want to make sure whatever happens on their watch, your dog is going to be covered things are going to get handled and it's not going to be a big, huge garbage fire. Yes, Um, (laughs) it will be (laughs) right. And you always want someone that is first aid pet CPR certified, because I can't tell you how many times I was a certified dog walker for five years. There was always an emergency at least once a month. And you want to know that they will handle it smoothly. They're not going to call you freaking out. Oh my God. I lost your dog and I don't know where to go. You want them to be calm, composed, and they can handle right. a crisis. Um, and just what kind of equipment they use. That is a mm. big one because some walkers, they don't really care about prong collars or choke chains mm-hmm. or using alpha methods. Mm. But, you know, for us, it really does align with our ethics as far as using proper equipment that isn't going to make your dog feel stressed. It's going to be a good, you just want a positive experience across the board in every aspect. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that up about equipment and how they're going to handle the dog, because regardless of where you're at with that, although obviously we promote positive methods and not using those things, you want to know what exactly they use or don't use. And if you're comfortable with that or not, where their line is. And also how they're going to generally look at handling your dog because they are the ones that are going to be bringing them in and out of the yard, out into the neighborhood, out at a park, potentially getting in and out of the car. They might see other people or dogs out and about. So I think that's really important. You touched on that because I don't think a lot of people think to ask that question. I mean, no. hell, people don't ask it of dog trainers <laughs> that they hire. So I'm always <laughs> preaching about this because you don't know what you don't know. So I'm glad that we're raising 
that point. And I do want to say, I'm glad you brought up the insurance and bonding and, you know, CPR certified and first aid stuff, because again, things I don't think, pe I think people assume, you know, Hey, this is a professional business this is a dog walker. They obviously they know what they're doing. Yeah, They obviously should have these things. It's kind of implied, but some people don't. Uh, and, you know, even for me, we did dog walking for several years where I had a staff and people who helped me and I went out and did it as well, along with the training. And it was a crazy time, but we did it. It's it was, yeah. it, I know you've done that too. And it was like a lot to juggle. Um, so I luckily had some help at some juncture, but I made sure that they, they, you know, that we were covered. Everybody was under the policy and, you know, yes. that they were aware of how to, what emergency situations might happen, how to handle that. So really important. Thank you so much for touching on that. Would, and I do want to touch on this because I, I didn't, we didn't talk about this before, but I know there's walkers who do, I'm kind of going on, I'm going on a wild card Girl. here. You, you just <laughs> brought this to my, you just brought this idea up to me and I was like, this is a good point to bring up too. In my neck of the woods in suburbia in New Jersey here, most dog walkers are, at least from my, what I know locally, they kind of do one-off visits. So they're coming just for your dog in your house. They walk them around the neighborhood or they play with them in the yard. We bring them back in. Good to go. Thanks so much. Lovely. But I know that there's walkers out there and maybe in more, you know, in cities or, or more, you know, uh, densely populated areas where they might be bringing out kind of your quote unquote pack walk pack. style. And I just do, I do want to touch on this and going off tangent a bit <laughs> in the beginning, but you know, it, I know that's out there as well. And I just wanted you to share your feelings and, and I'll share mine too, but <laughs> you know, I always like one-on-ones and that's what I recommend. Uh, you know, obviously dogs in the same household, if they're all going out, so, you know, if there's two or three dogs that live together that we're bringing out to the yard at one time or, or walking or whatever. But I think, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Should, should they be paying attention to how many dogs that these, these walkers yes. could be bringing out? Yes. So <laughs> Being a certified professional dog walker in San Francisco was a dumpster fire of its own. <laughs> I loved it. It was amazing. But yeah, some people, so in San Francisco specifically, or the Bay Area, they had specific uh, numbers of dogs you could walk at specific parks, and you had to get a permit to walk at specific wow. parks. Okay. Not that anyone followed that, because, you know, yeah. people Rules are there but, to be broken, I guess. <laughs> right. So like oh, a, a specific park, you could walk uh, six dogs legally. Okay. And then um, another park, you could walk up to eight dogs legally. But the mm. max for that area was you could only walk up to eight dogs legally off okay. leash. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to have them under voice control. You need to be a responsible walker, of course. Yeah. So with that, I would definitely ask like, okay, how many dogs are going out at a time with you? Right. Are they mm -hmm. off leash? Do you have dogs that stay on leash because you know there are some fearful dogs mm -hmm. dogs working on getting off leash um and that's another thing I want to touch on is when they introduce the feed now we're going off on another thing that's but okay <laughs> <laughs> how do they introduce a new dog to the group mm. do they have that dog on a long line so our protocol was having a dog on a 30 foot long line for at least a minimum of 30 days where we practice building a recall Wow, um, so that great. is something to ask is how is my dog going to be introduced to the group? How are you going to work with my dog if they mm -hmm. are going to be off leash? Um, on leash, I would say a maximum of three dogs going out at a time mm -hmm. because you want your dog to have that one-on-one -on -one snippy time. Yeah. Sure. If they're social and they like other dogs, that's okay. But I would be mm -hmm. asking how the walker is going to be introducing them on yeah, leash. How that happens. on leash greetings can go iffy I wouldn't oh I'd yeah about that yeah for me yeah. I really like for on leash I'd like it to just be one-on-one -on -one. that's my dog's solo time agreed agreed but there are these other options and you know depending on how they set it up I think asking those really important questions right so that you know you know that okay I feel comfortable with this and uh, when in doubt, just follow your gut on this, people, you know, listen, yes. I, I want to just say, but even <laughs> if it sounds good, but if you're not feeling it deep down, something's off, like vet another person, interview the next person, see if you feel better. So I'm right. glad it's we got like, to touch on that. 
it's like having someone come and give an estimate on your house. You want to get a quote from multiple people and that yeah. is okay to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they say, you know, they're walking like six to eight dogs on leash at a time run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause that's not right. <laughs> that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> right. Right. Agreed. I'm so glad we thought, thank you for <laughs> making me think of that. So we could talk through that too, because I think that's important to say up front that that's best and that's kind of best practices. So, right. you know, I think, a lot of times too, and I spe- especially because we've we've done dog walking stuff, we've done dog training stuff, and you know now primarily being dog trainers and and all that. I feel that a lot of times, you know, clients I've had and, and people that obviously aren't sure. It's why they're asking, but their dog is a little bit weird with new people or whatever guests coming in, whatever all these issues that could possibly be. Are there certain types of dogs or situations where you would say to somebody, hey, it's probably not a good idea to hire a dog walker right now? Um, Yeah. So if your dog is fearful of new people or it takes them a while to work up to a new person, Mm -hmm. I would say see where that walker is with, you know, because there are some walkers, myself being included, I took the time to get to know a new dog. I would come over every day during my walks and I would just throw chicken at this chihuahua Mm -hmm. to get him to like me. And I earned his love within a matter of two weeks because I put that effort in. So not everyone is willing to do that, but always test the waters and see. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you are like, okay, my dog is just not okay with other people. We can work ways around that, whether it's having someone come introduce themselves daily, throw Mm-hmm. food party at your dog or maybe daycare might be a better option but again yeah. it is getting them more comfortable with the person mm-hmm. I know for Pip for example he has really bad set banks needs mommy all the time mm-hmm. great at daycare though ah, does not nice. care about me when he goes to daycare so <laughs> there's a weird level oh that's cute it's like a field <laughs> trip for him he's yeah. like okay we're good but yeah I think I think too what I would I, I want to say this because I've had when, when we did dog walking for those couple of years and I would go with every single walker, you know, to the meet and greet. So right. most dog walkers will give a free meet and greet or a small fee to do the meet and Always. greet. Usually it's free, but you know, everybody's doing different things, but they would come and I would go with them, of course, as the dog trainer brain would be turned on there and I'd be watching everything, making sure it was safe. And I was very anal about it. And That's exactly what Josh and I would do. Yes. Yeah. I know you guys, I know you understand me on this, but I'd be like, oh, I see a lot happening here where maybe someone else would not know that not being a right. trainer. Um, and uh, sometimes I would just say, hey, if your dog's a little bit, you know, not a hundred percent with us. And let's say you're hiring a walker, you're not sure, your dog's a little apprehensive, there's potential there, but we're not really sure about it. Start hiring a walker to come. Like you said, Mandy, you know, even if you have to hire somebody, if they're not maybe willing to do it as part of just caring and wanting to be, yeah, you know, wanting pay to do them. it on their spare time, pay yeah. them to show up and yeah. start working with them for three weeks before your vacation or before you yeah. need them, you know, build this rapport before you need it, folks. I feel like that's super, super important. I will say something too, that if your dog likes women more than men, uh-huh. make sure you're hiring a walker based on that. So, you yes. know, my dog that's fearful of men, I'm not going to hire a male walker. Right. That's going to make it potentially harder to, harder. to overcome here. So right. that's a good point too. You know, so if you know your dog does better with a specific type of individual, let's try to target that so that it makes them more comfortable. So, you know, and I, I, I just, again, sidebar because we're shooting, shooting off here, Mandy, but <laughs> I just thought of this too. Have you had this many, this happened a couple of times where the dog would be a little apprehensive, nothing crazy, but maybe a not hundred percent when we were there the first time or two. Uh, but then when the pet parent was not present, they were at work or they were out, Different. the dog was fine and Different really happy. Story. And then I've had the opposite where the dog was pretty fine during the meet and greet. And then we and show then up I'm and the dog's like, no. Yeah. 
So just so, because of that, I would say if you're another thing, a good thing about hiring somebody before you need them is you could just go out to the store, have the person come and the person be like, oh, they're apprehensive or they're growling right now or something's going on. Don't have the first big run be you're in Jamaica for three weeks, you know? Right. No. So. Oh my God. <laughs> um, with that is a great question and something that doesn't really get thought about. Mm -hmm. um, so if the dog is like, oh my God, you're so cool. Okay. Oh, wait, no, mom's not here. I don't uh -huh. want to go with you. Our protocol was of always scheduled to be there on the first day, work from home that day or uh -huh. take a late day. If I'm picking up in the morning, be there yeah. just so that we have a smooth transition. And then that usually always smooths it over. Another thing I always asked on the first day was, hey, can you have their leash and harness on them so that yes. I can just grab them and go? Because there is nothing that is going to stress the dog out more and make the situation harder on your poor walker than having to corner your dog and leash them up, maybe making them, you know, stress pee. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. We want a good association. So just have them leashed up and harnessed and ready. Have them in a crate if they like being in a crate so they can just grab them and go out the door. Yeah. Um, and if your walker is not bringing treats into the house with them, have treats ready. Yeah. Like, hey, there's a jar of treats on the entryway. Take mm -hmm. some. I always was like, listen, we're going to bring these couple kinds. Yeah. I would have like pre-approved couple bags that we would have. If your dog has dietary restrictions, allergies, or if you just prefer just have your own out as well. Yeah, which exactly. Yours. Happy to do that. But yeah, <laughs> I think, I think every, every new person that's coming in to meet your dog, it's always a plus to have food associated with them because it's going to help them build to that positive association you were just referring to. And especially mm -hmm. the walker, because we need that walker to have a good, so we need that your dog to have a good association of the walker. The walker needs to be like fun auntie or uncle, which I yes. always love. Me too. Me too. <laughs> auntie Erica. I love that. And so, you know, I know most people are obviously, you know, people ask locally or they'll ask a friend and all oh, that's fine for the most part, but know what to look for. Like we were talking about, but when someone goes online, they're searching for somebody locally or near them. What are some things they should be looking for? Like on the person's website or in their in the language on there or just, you know, credential stuff, anything you would recommend people should be keeping an eye out for? Uh, so definitely the easiest way to find a certified professional dog walker is, and I'll get, give you a link that you can link to everyone too. Uh, but dog biz has their own professional dog walking Academy. I mm -hmm. went through it. Josh went through it. We actually nice. instructed as well. Um, nice. But this is a like, four week program or four day program where mm -hmm. people that want to become walkers, they go through it. They learn the emergency protocol. They learn to get insured and bonded. They learn how to handle group situations on and off leash. Wow, great. And they do not get that certification until they have passed with a field trip. Mm -hmm. So dog biz has a link on their website where you can find any certified pro all over the world that has gone through their program. And you will be able to find a certified professional walker in your area. Nice. Um, with that, I would say just look for red flags. You know, there's these trigger words like balanced, alpha, mm -hmm. even pack is a yes. little, I, I don't like the word pack. I like saying group outings. Yes. Um, agree. But just make sure, you know, how long the dogs are being walked, how many are being walked. Some websites will say that some will not. Mm -hmm. Um, but good walkers will always say what their certifications are. Mm -hmm. So always look for certifications. And if you ever get the gut feeling where I'm like, mm, that dog has a shot collar in the photo. Yeah. Turn away. Yeah. <laughs> Check out their, their social media. I love yes. looking because there's pictures. You can see a lot of, of what the dogs look like on these outings and Do the dogs look stressed. Mm -hmm. look what are happy? they wearing and what does it look like? How many other dogs are around them in those photos and what's everybody you'll be able to see a lot. I mean, social media in general, we can, we can find out about a lot of about yeah. a person in general <laughs> and the business and what's going on. So I love using social media to just whether I'm, you know, I, I'm getting my, my siding power washed. And I went on social media yeah. to look at, you know, I'm like, oh, this house looks like pretty clean. So regardless, <laughs> I feel like that does a really good job as well. So 
Yeah, I love the, having affiliations, you know, credentials, what, where are they, you know, are they affiliated with any dog walking groups or, you know, things like that. So um, thank you. And definitely we'll, we'll share the link uh, to, to that um, certification program. So those that may be interested that are listening on becoming a, a certified dog walker, you can, you can do so there. And yeah. uh, any other any other red flags that we should look for? So you know we're looking for those buzzwords and anything else we should keep an eye out for. Um, I would just say like the types of equipment being used, how long they're being walked, because yeah. anything that is less than like a fifteen minute walk, it's not worth your time or money, and it's not mm -hmm. doing a lot for your dog. That's a good um, point. 15 is probably the lowest I've ever seen or whatever. Like when we were doing it, that was, I, oh yeah. Minutes, there were people listing that. Least. And I'm like, is that just a potty? Like you're letting the dog go pee and then you're coming back, right back in, in for 30 yeah. bucks. That's not <laughs> worth it. Um, look at pricing too, because yeah. a big thing is it, why are they priced so low? Mm -hmm. You know, are they just trying to, are they desperate for clients? Does, mm -hmm. Cause then that makes me think, okay, where's their integrity with their business then? Mm -hmm. You want someone that it's priced well, probably around what everyone else is. Right. And then determine how long your dog's going out for what the certifications are. And if like that, you said, their social media, do the dogs look happy? Mm -hmm. What are the testimonials look like? Right. Right. That's really, that's a, that's a good point too, with pricing and things like that, because just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's good. And also just because it's really expensive doesn't always mean that it's good either. So that's right. These questions are going to help you navigate if it's a good fit and if it's worth the money and all that stuff, which by the way, it, if it is generally, you know, in the price range of what's around you, it's worth paying for it because I know sometimes we're kind of, you know, looking for, you know, you can have your nephew or whoever come over for free and that's great. But the professionals, the true professionals, they're going to be available when you need them. It's their job. It's a business. It's, it's so you don't have to feel family guilt to have your family come over all the time or a neighbor or whatever. So I do think there is value in paying for this service and, and helping small businesses as well. And just, I mean, if you can and having, a real professional come in because that's their job is to deal with all this and they know exactly how to deal with it for hiring the right person. So, um, right. I, I like saw that. a flyer for a little girl in the neighborhood offering dog walking. I'm like, Oh, that's cute. But there's no way I'm hiring you to walk my <laughs> high energy puppy at all. Oh yeah. It's the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, this is a little harder than it looks like. And that's another thing Like when we did it and I was like doing it for a while, I'm like, it's, it's fun. And I love dogs it's and everything, but lot. it is work, man. It's it work. Is work. It is not easy. So what you're paying is, is worth the money, you know? And, um, I, I do want to ask this too, because I think, I think a lot of people are always kind of trying to weigh out, do I go dog walker route or do I go doggy daycare route? And I think they kind of almost put them at the same level and go, oh, I'll just, you know, I don't know which one's better. They might go off of pricing difference there or whatnot. So I know we can have a whole episode on doggy daycares, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but is, would you say that's better than hiring a dog walker to come over? Or what are your thoughts on the dog, dog daycare versus dog walker debate? I think... It's great to put your dog in daycare if you are gone from home all day and you notice mm -hmm. that your dog maybe can't settle at home or they have mm -hmm. a hard time being home alone, but you can't hire someone to come babysit and mm -hmm. you know your dog is social and likes other dogs, mm -hmm. daycare is great. Yeah. So Pip, for example, he is 10 years old, has step ink since we adopted him. It's mm -hmm. all mommy radio all day long. Can't leave mommy. I was a full-time dog trainer working eight hours a day mm -hmm. commuting. And I was just like, I can't take him with me. I can't leave him in the car because it's mm -hmm. too hot. Um, so we put him in daycare. That was about $600 a month. Mm -hmm. It was worth it because I could take him every single day. Mm -hmm. I knew he was happy because I would get him out of the car. He'd be like, get back, leaving. See ya. <laughs> See ya. I'm going to work, mom. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. all right. <laughs> and it's something That's I could cute. rely on. Yeah. So it's like, Hey, I, I need emergency. I need you guys to watch Pip. They're like, great, bring them in. Mm -hmm. It's just that added insurance, but right. if your dog, you know, he, they just need a really good run. 
romp for an hour and a half, be in the car for 30 minutes, Mm -hmm. be with their friends, be social, get tired. And then they'll go home and snooze until you come home and you know, your dog is like that. Then a walker or a runner would be great for your dog. So like our old dog, Penny, she could go out for an hour and a half with us, come home and crash until we came home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how Jade is too. My my people, she's like, all right, if I just get that outing, I'm, I'm good. Right. Which I have to give them today. (laughs) Later today, they have to get that outing because they're going to let me know about it. (laughs) So I think it it does. It it matters about where your dog is with being left home alone and then how social they are. Cause daycare can also be really stressful if your dog is in that setting all day and they don't want to be around dogs all day. Yep. Yeah, I feel like dog dog daycares and sometimes even dog parks can sometimes be. And we can again. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it back because I could talk on and on and on and on. We could have a whole other episode on what to look for in a doggy daycare. Maybe we should do I'll that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to do that. But you know, but I I do sometimes consider it for maybe not. I'll say this. I feel like sometimes it's kind of a nightclub. Yeah. And I say you don't know who's had too much to drink, who really wants to be there and doesn't, and you know, what's going on coming there to rage. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what the, what's happening in there. You're just going in. So I feel like, you know, your dog has to kind of be a party loving nightclub type of guy or gal to really enjoy that. And not every dog is like that. So, you know, you have to know your dog, like you're saying, Mandy, at the bottom, you know, end of the day, we have to know, is this better for my dog, worse for my dog? What's going to make my dog most comfortable? Not just like, okay, the dog's somewhere. So we're good. Make sure that they're, yeah, yeah. yeah, Make sure that Uh, they're doing okay there. Something I do want to touch on. I, I yeah. think about your dog's age yes. and their size. Yes. So there are some walkers that only walk little dogs mm-hmm. and there are some walkers that only walk big dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, so like my morning group was my senior and small dog group. And then okay. my afternoon was my more mid range and high energy group. So I, okay. I separated them based on their levels so that we didn't have, you know, fights all yeah. the time. Um, and same thing for daycares because mm-hmm. Pip, where I put him in daycare, they put him in the small elderly section. Oh, good. They're like, he's feeling <laughs> spicy today. We might put him with the puppies. I'm like, try it out. Yeah. <laughs> but, but cater it to your dog's you yeah. know, energy level and their age and size as well. I think that's a really good point too, because I, I have known of... Uh, daycares near me that just there's small there's Throw great there's together. great danes and then chihuahuas together and i'm like what's happening why no. is this happening uh you know it's it's just it can get it can get not so safe if we're not paying attention to those factors so that's an again vet wherever you're bringing your dog and figure these things out and ask these questions and don't feel bad to ask these questions of the dog walker whoever you're hiring for any service with your dog because you know, whether it's a trainer, walker, daycare, what have you ask questions. Don't feel right. It's your, it's your baby. We got to ask these questions and make sure that, that we like the answers to them. So I like, I like asking this too, because as the, as the people listening, you, they're going to hire somebody and they're going to become someone's client. So for all the dog walkers out there, I wanted to I'll ask, appreciate this. yes, I'm yes. I'm like, how can we as pet parents be a better client for dog walkers. So what, what can make us good clients of theirs? Communication. Yes. That is everything because I can't tell you how many times I went to pick up a dog and the dog wasn't there. Oh boy. Because they'd be on vacation and I'm like, Hey, I'm here. Fluffy (laughs) and there's no fluffy. No one's here. Like the lights are off guys. And they're like, Oh, we went out of town. We forgot to tell you. And that's where I step in and say, Oh, you didn't cancel. So you're still getting charged because I showed up at your house. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And you do need to respect your walkers policies because we work hard. We run this business. It costs a lot of money to get the permits and Mm -hmm. pay for our equipment, pay for Mm -hmm. our vehicle just to transport Mm -hmm. the dogs. Mm -hmm. So just, communication is really good. So if yeah. you are thinking like, oh, I'm not feeling good, I want to have them cuddle at home with me, text them the night before or the morning of. Right. Some walkers may have different policies. Us, you could text us before 9am and mm-hmm. we would say, okay, great. Um, mm-hmm. 
just communication. That is the one thing I can say. And um, just paying attention to the time when we pick up. So I know for my experience personally, uh, when I was dog walking, I always had a specific time frame where Mm -hmm. I would come and I'd be like, Hey, I come in between this time, make sure your dog is home. If they Mm -hmm. are not home, I am not walking them. Right. And there were times where I went to pick up the dog. They arrived maybe 20 minutes later and they're like, I was like, sorry, I'm already at the park now. And the window closed. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so just be right. really respectful of our time frame, of our scheduling, because we have certain time slots for certain dogs and mm-hmm. just communicate everything. Mm-hmm. I do not care if I get a text at 12 a.m. I will answer it the next morning, mm-hmm. but text me because I'd rather right. get it than not get it. That's, that's, I'm, I'm glad that you said that because I think sometimes it can seem loosey goosey for mm-hmm. some dog walker, dog parent relationships. But, you know, if you hire somebody who has a real business and is really doing this, yeah, we have time restrictions and windows and pla- you know places we have to be at another time. So very important. And I, I would say too, in terms of communication being so important, also being, I've, I can't tell you how many times we went into a house and they told me the dog was like really, really fine with people and they really weren't and then they started wow. explaining well you know he does get snippy about this or oh you know he do- is uncomfortable about that so maybe people just don't think of it but I'm bringing this up to help to say hey tell them every tell your walker your potential everything. walker everything about your dog's behavior everything about what their day to day is every mole like. every yes, freckle, every, every bump detail. and lump and whatever yeah like mark on them like yeah we, we need to know those things because if not you know i had a client once that you know didn't tell me their dog had some type of remove something removed somewhere on them and then we went out you know on a neighborhood walk and then they're bleeding yeah and then i we got back and i was like there's like this this weird you know mark on the dog and i'm, I'm sitting there panicked like did he brush up on something and so then i let her know i took a picture and she was like oh yeah you know they got something removed and i was like oh my god um, um, so <laughs> yeah so you know as much as you can like you would a babysitter for your child, like let your dog walker know for your dog what's happening so that they are aware of it. And I just lastly want to add, because I think where your type of dynamic with the dog walking was kind of like pick up and go somewhere cool. Whereas Mm -hmm. where I live, no one does that. So, so it's like, we go to the person's house, we play with them in the yard or we go on a neighborhood walk and then we bring them back home and it's like very, very one-on-one. So it's cool to, and I I do think, you know, now there's maybe one or two who, who do bring somewhere like to a park. So just wanted to say like, you can get a walker that will do both or maybe just specializes in one. So again, asking those questions and figuring out what the outings are going to be like. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So this was good. Any final thoughts before we go into how to connect with you, Mandy? Did we miss anything? Because I feel like this is a a lot of good info. I know I'm like, I'm trying to make sure we didn't miss anything. I will say this too. I, I, at least with when we did it, I paid the money to have a, a online kind of like booking system for my clients. So these are again with modern day technology and everything we have going on, most walkers you can ask this is like, there was like a portal, a client portal, and they could, they could put in if the dog was feeling sick or had something removed or Mm -hmm. their vet records. And they can kind of at their discretion, add all that in, they can book appointments, cancel appointments, change times, you know, within specific limitations. So that's something that helped me a lot that I think helped people also like our service because we had, it was easy for them to kind of do all, Yes. Yes. Yeah. So seeing if they have stuff like that too, is another thing to look for if you want well, that type of thing. Yeah. And make sure like, what's their intake form process. Do they yeah. even have a form or do you just say, Hey, I need my dog walked. How much is it? Because <laughs> you know, we up, had a, yeah. right. We had an in-depth form. We asked how your dog is with people, how they are yep. in the car, how they are being handled before we even go and check you out and see if you're a good client for us. Yeah. Another thing is ask if, if they are taking your dog, picking it up and driving it somewhere, ask mm-hmm. how they transport dogs. Are dogs yeah. being in crates? Are they being tied down? Are they yep. safely behind a barrier? Mm-hmm. Because honestly, dogs should not be in the front seat, especially if they're not tied down. 
Right, right. Like the only dogs I had in my front seat were my tinies, and I had them both strapped in with leashes right. and uh, like a what car is it? Restraint. Seat belt. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So ask about how they're being transported, and is your dog okay being in the car? Because mm-hmm. there are some dogs that are not being okay in the car. So That's that walker true. may not be good for you. That's true. And last thing too, I just thought of one last thing. <laughs> one more. One, one more. more. One more. <laughs> this is g- genuinely though. This is the last one. There are these kind of dog walking apps. You know your 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 rovers, your whatever, and 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 you know I. I I, I know there's a bunch of them, but I just want to say without, you know, going into too much detail about it, I do think that, you know, when you have an open-ended kind of service like that, where anybody can, oh, pretty much anybody could kind of sign up to do it, 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 there, you know, there could be some good people and there could be some not so good people that might not show up or they might not be as responsible. So I did want to just say, because people ask me this as well. I always prefer and recommend hiring somebody who has their own, it's their business. You know, it's Erica's dog walking business, right? Just somebody you're kind of hiring on like an Uber type of thing. Um, you, you know, not that everybody's bad with it. It just leaves it a lot more open-ended in my opinion. There are I want a to lot of horror person. stories. Yeah. yeah There's so, so many horror stories with that. Um, you want to be careful. My rule of thumb is, that if you can hire someone from a small business, go that route. I know yeah, that not right. everyone can afford to run their own business. And there are yeah. plenty of great professionals that use the Rover and WAG app. Yeah. Um, the thing is, you can't really pick your walker. Okay. Yeah. With that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's you kind, can. Yeah. I so, think it's kind of a roulette, like a roulette type of thing. Yeah. Um, although your I could dog, be wrong. It's but. just like say you have an amazing lab and they just love everything. Everyone, sun is yes. always shining, rainbows coming out their butt. Yes. <laughs> then maybe your or dog they might be a good that. candidate. Right. Yeah. Like I had one client that they used WAG when I wasn't available and their dog was just like freaking happy, go lucky all the yeah. time. Like that's a great dog for it. But right. if your dog is fearful of people or people selective, yeah, I wouldn't go through that. It just, Agree. It, it's also, you're skimping on quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it leaves it a more, much more open to chance. Whereas, yeah. especially as me being a dog mom as well, I'm like, oh, I really want to like meet the person who owns the business. And I want right. to, you know, again, it's just like we would interview anybody else. So I do want, again, thinking of it almost like a babysitter, it's like I kind of want to know the, ba- yeah, yeah, I want to know the babysitter and like understand who they are and how they operate before we move forward. So wanted and to I'm touch not- on that comfortable with some stranger going in my house to get my dog yeah yeah there's <laughs> that, that too them. we're going yeah. in the house and all that stuff I mean you're giving your your key and access to your home to to someone so that's all of this is so important to consider so right. this was great Mandy thank you so much we covered a lot today what to look yeah. for red flags what to look for on websites how to interview and vet people the daycare and dog walker kind of debate on that and how people people can be better clients, which I like covering. So um, where can people connect with you, Mandy? I know you have a few different awesome projects <laughs> that you're involved with and businesses you have. So what are, how can people connect with you? Uh, my main account is Woof Culture. That is my clothing brand. Uh, it's just Woof and then C-U-L-T-R spelled funky or Pacific New- Pacific North Woof is my training business. We will be opening up shop probably late June around and we'll be doing virtual training. So not just based in Oregon, catering to everyone. And then I also run the dog biz social media where you can get more info about dog walkers and all that fun stuff. Awesome. Yes. I will make sure to tag all that. Thank you again, Mandy. I appreciate you coming on. I'm so glad we finally got to do this and for bringing all of your knowledge on the dog walking front. So thank you so, so much for, for coming on. Of course. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And for those listening, do not forget, treat yourself and treat your dogs.